Now in this video I'm going to give you a few tips on building this 80 meter ARDF receiver. Now I have two other videos. The first one um, concerning the preparation of the box, drilling the holes, etc. And then another video on putting together the uh, antenna, the ferret rod and windings. So in this video I'm just going to talk more generally about building this receiver, um, giving you a few tips. Now please note that this, this um, video concerns only the PCB version um, which uses a polyvericon capacitor for the tuning. Okay. Now the surface mounted components here are generally 1206 format but the pad spacing is such that you can get away with using 0805 components if you've got any of those. Now there are a couple of uh, TO92 devices on the, on the board and I used, unfortunately I used a standard pattern for the pads which are ridiculously close and uh, very difficult to solder without bridging. So what you'll need to do when you're um, lo uh, fixing these and solder these in is to bend over the lead outs so that they lie flat with the board and then clip them off um, so they just cover the the pads and then you can solder those with a fine soldering iron uh, to avoid bridging. But if I get around to redesigning this board for another batch then I'll, I'll improve that those pads and make them uh, a bit more easily easier to, 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 to solder. Uh, the uh, toroid here if you wind that with uh, something like 26 or even 28 gauge wire um, then they are rigid it should be rigid enough to um, be self-supporting there is a hole in there so you could conceivably put a narrow uh, zip tie uh, to secure it but you shouldn't really need it now this gain control pot you'll need to prepare the leads by bending them backwards and making sure that they are bent so that it's flush with the body of the pot. You'll need to do this because you otherwise you won't have enough lead length to go through the PCB and to solder on the other side. In the past I have used double sided tape to help support the PCB but um, I don't really think that's necessary. Now the LED here um, its position or height uh, you can determine from the height of the body of either the variable capacitor or the pot whichever is the greater. So you can see here how we determine the height of the LED. Now the tuning capacitor ideally should be a low profile type which has got a similar body, body height to the, uh, the volume control pot. Now the lead outs need to be bent backwards which is not how they are usually supplied. So here's one with the leads bent forward. So what you need to do is to remove the back casing and just bend the leads for, uh, backwards and then just uh, reassemble the, the casing.
Now the trimmers on the back, they need to be set initially to about half mesh. I'll talk about, about that a bit later because it affects the, uh, the oscillator and the tuning range. Now the oscillator uses a ceramic resonator with a nominal frequency of 3.58 megahertz and the tuning capacitor will pull the frequency up or down so ideally we will get a frequency range of something like 3.51 uh, to 3.6 megahertz which is the normal coverage required for 80 meter ARDF. Now unfortunately each resonator will pull slightly differently. Now I recommend that you use a branded type of Murata for instance. I found some of the cheaper types um, they may pull very easily but uh, they're not very stable. Now it's quite important that you limit the tuning range because the variable capacitor has only got a rotation of 180 degrees. Now for the high frequency limit you will need to adjust the trimmers on the back. For the low frequency uh, limit 3.51 uh, in order to achieve that it's a little bit more complicated or can be. Now on the PCB we have two links LK1 and LK2. Now they correspond to the two sections on the variable capacitor. The link 1 which is the 160 puff section is closed and therefore enabled. The link 2 is the 70 uh, puff section of the capacitor and that's left open and disabled. So what you'll need to do initially to test the oscillator uh, pulling range is to short L2 so you've got no additional inductance and um, if you're lucky the, uh, the uh, ceramic resonator will pull down to 3.51. Now if it doesn't you've got two options. Uh, you can completely short L2 which will um, add another 70 puff to the variable capacitor but you probably find that's going to be too much so you could put a smaller uh, capacitor across those across that link LK2 to give you a bit more capacitance or you could add a bit of inductance at L2. Now what you can use for the inductance L2 is a, a few turns on a ferrite bead or as I've got here in this case an FT2343 I think ferrite toroid with three turns. So now all that remains is to drop the PCB into the, the box and you might find that you need a couple of uh, washers or another nut um, on the control pot to level up the board in the box like so. So then the only other remaining jobs are to wire in the headphone socket, uh, to wire up the sense button and to wire up the the lead outs from the antenna coils. Now in all these cases uh, you can solder directly to the pads. You don't need any header pins. Now the sense antenna 
is fixed into a four millimeter a single pole socket uh, the antenna itself is a three inch length of uh, half inch wide measuring tape um, soldered to a, a four millimeter a plug and then just covered with a uh, shrink uh, sleeving so job almost done just uh, need to go into the field once we've uh, checked everything is working and just a reminder you might need to change the uh, the sense lead out wires to swap them round to get the sense direction that you uh, prefer so other than that uh, job done hope you found this video useful good luck with the ARDF Bye for now.